Okay, so we've been over several different uh, options for uh, creating variation in your digital synthesizer that will result in analog sounding sounds. And the last one I want to point out is really fast and simple on this particular synthesizer. So <laughs> it makes it, and it's kind of cheating for, for a reason, but like, Part of what happens with analog sound is that due to uh, the sort of, uh, the sounds terrible, but the lack of knowledge of the designers, I mean, uh, you know, oscillators were new in the 70s. They were not that old. They were, you know, basically less than 70 years old. Um, there was still uh, some, you know, people were still trying to understand it. They were still designing them for new purposes. So, you know, they had some variation and sometimes they got the voltages a little bit wacky. It's what happened basically with a number of the early mode products is that there was saturation. There was distortion that was happening. And uh, the cool thing about the Pro 2 is that we've got this uh, knob right over here uh, <laughs> that says distortion. So uh, we can just add distortion and what's the cheating part is that this is analog distortion so of course you can like amp it up there's it without and that's obviously too much that's not the distortion we would be using but if you turn it up a little And that's subtle enough that that just might be a buzzy sawtooth now. You know, you might say, well, does that sound distorted? The answer is no. But that's the point. I mean, these variations are not, these analog generating variations are not overt. They are subtle. And it's the combination of all of them that leads to the outcome that you want so yeah you don't want it like you don't want massive pitch variation you don't want a massive distortion or massive wave uh, variation you just want a subtle amount of distortion to add now also the uh this synth much like you would have found on a on a mini moog this synth has feedback uh so like basically it's taking the output of the synth and feeding it back into it and when you turn it up, you're gonna get another type of distortion that can be kind of wild. Or not very wild at all. Uh, negative distortion, uh, negative feedback seems to be generating more of an outcome. We almost get to a square wave there. But you might wanna do that, and of, co of course you can modulate that. So. And change the tuning of it. You're really getting completely different timbres there, but again, that might be your key to getting this to sound uh, like the, uh, you know, the 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 intensity of distortion that the, your the vintage oscillator that you're looking for might have. So there's also feedback, and that can be vol voltage controlled in the same way that we voltage controlled the wave shape, which I'm going to set up again really quickly here, where you can use a uh, slewed random wave so that this thing is just kind of, you know, uh, <laughs> the amount and frequency of the feedback is varying over time, just messing it up and creating different outcomes. So uh, just real quick, if we wanna do this, so like, First thing, let's go into assign source. We'll go to, uh, I'm gonna use oscillator two as our noise source. And oscillator two, we're gonna give it the, um, White noise. Uh, let's see, I don't think we need to turn that up. Actually, instead of doing it that way, I'm going to use the other method, which is, it's good to, that we have this video. I'm going to use 
LFOs, using noise is a great idea, but I'm going to use LFOs for all of the functions. So this will be uh, another thing you can do. Um, I'm gonna use LFO one, and I'm going to set it to our old favorite, where's the wave shape? Our old favorite uh, random. <laughs> And we'll turn it up to get the amount. So we have this sort of variation. And then we can check the slew rate. And then we can turn that frequency back down a little bit. Okay, so then, of course, we're going to go back to our assign and bring that down to almost nothing. Okay, then we're going to go to... Um, uh, LFO2. And we're basically gonna set up that same thing pretty much, except for we're gonna go to oscillator one's shape mod. And let's see, what frequency do we have at one? Let's go up to 101 for the shape. Well, actually let's make it different. Let's uh, make it 85. <laughs> Wow, that amount. Yeah, you can hear that variation. And uh, let's then add distortion. Just, I'll get it just so it's under the really obvious. We could bring in oscillator three as a, a sort of other uh, opportunity. So we have sort of a double pitch. And uh, of course we could go into its modulation and put a little slop on it. Just so we don't have to go through the same thing for oscillator two. And I mean, that is a lot of that is a little too overt, but it at least gives you a sense of what we're doing. Uh, of course you could always You could always add portamento. And you have, you know, there's your analog. Uh, this is sort of a slapdash example of it. I do have some I can show you that I've done in the past. Uh, where I used these functions. Because a lot of times it depends on what wave shape you're using, what you're trying to achieve, the degree to which you add the things that I've shown you, it's gonna matter 
with the type of sound you're making. So in instances where I can sit and fine tune over a long period of time, you get something more realistic like this. Uh, there's more. Let's see, where's another one? Oh, polysaw. Too much variation in there for it to for the variation not to seem intentional, but still it sounds good. Uh, let's see where it is. This, I think at least one more. This one's no, that's just affected. And it's one of those things I swear if you heard this out of context without seeing where it's coming from and knowing what I showed you, you'd be like, oh, you would just, uh, this technique will definitely give you a sound that people won't wonder if it's analog. They will assume it is. And uh, that's kind of the cool thing about it. But anyway, that is, uh, those are some functions that can help you generate more analog sounding sounds with your digital synthesizer.